Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another episode of Dadvice TV Live. And tonight we have probably the most popular co host of all time to join me, Dr. Stephen Rosansky. And we are going to be talking about blood pressure medications. What are the safest? What are the best? Whether you have kidney disease or you don't, there is lots of great, important, and really helpful information in tonight's show. Now, since this is all really important, we're going to jump right on into the good stuff because Dr. Rosansky always leaves a little bit of time with every um, visit here on Dad Vice TV to answer your questions. So go ahead, if you have questions about kidney disease, if you have questions about blood pressure medication, um, or about your blood pressure, hypertension, if you have that, go ahead, type it in the comments, and we'll see if we can get to it during tonight's show. So let me go ahead and let's, let's get ready to introduce my co-host. He is the author of the amazing book, Learn the facts about kidney disease. This is a great book that makes understanding kidney disease very simple. It talks about things that you can do to be proactive. It explains what's important and what's not. And it also, probably one of the most important things in there, it talks about when is the right time for you to start dialysis if you get to the point where you need dialysis. All right, author of that, Stephen Rosansky, please give him a great big giant welcome to Dadvice TV. Hey, Doc. Hey, James. I got some great energy to today. <laughs> What's that? I got a lot of energy today. boy, boy. Well, this is a lot better than last week. Last week, I wasn't sure we were going to be able to get our thing working, but we got it working very nicely tonight, and I'm very mm -hmm. happy about it. So, James, I guess you want me to do a quick introduction of who I am and why you have me on my on your show. So I am a retired kidney specialist with over 40 years taking care of kidney patients. Uh, I have had a big interest in high blood pressure. I've written extensively about high blood pressure in my research work. And uh, I also have written a lot about uh, progression of kidney disease and when to start dialysis. I've got over 100 publications, and um, and James told you I wrote a book for you folks because I realized that uh, a lot of the information that you need to have is just not readily available in an easy-to-read format, so I presented it in that book that he showed you, Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease. And the thing we're going to do tonight, and this is for everybody with high blood pressure, whether you've got very advanced kidney disease or no kidney disease, and um, we're going to look at all the medicines that you could be on. And a lot of you are probably taking medications that are not the best. You want to be on the best medicines. And we're going to tell you which ones are the best. And um, a lot of people uh, stop a medicine because they have side effects. And one of the things that you should know, and we're going to discuss the side effects of various, all the various blood pressure medicines, is that don't stop your medicine and give up on it. First of all, there's a lot of other medicines. Second of all, if you're having a little bit of a hard time with a new blood pressure medicine, or for that matter, any other medicine that's being prescribed, often within a few weeks, those bad issues may, may resolve. The commonest, what do you think the commonest, uh, James, the commonest uh, side effect that people complain about of, of blood pressure medicines. So the probably the one that I've had in the past is a cough. Okay, we're going to get to that one, but that's not the one I'm looking at. I'm looking at dizzy. People feel dizzy. Ooh. And and that dizziness is telling you something. If you feel weak or dizzy, especially when you get up, what do I tell patients, James, that most doctors don't? And to me, it's just so logical. Yep, your you blood think? pressure is probably too low and it's time to skip a dose. Not necessarily. It, you got to have a blood pressure machine. Yeah. Everybody Check it. listening, you got to go and buy yourself. They're cheap. 
they're automatic. They're so easy to use. You put them on, you push a button, it'll give you the number. You all need to have your own blood pressure machine. And yeah, what James said is absolutely the case. If you are feeling weaker, does he check your blood pressure? If it's not, at least in my opinion, above 120 or 130, and it's your and your doses do, you might want to hold the medicine because you're standing up and you're dizzy and you got a low low blood pressure. You can hold the dose. That would make a lot of sense and avoid some bad outcomes. The three commonest drugs. You have well, you you probably won't know. The three commonest drugs used for blood pressure are lisinopril, and we're going to get to all of them. Hang on one second. Let me just get my phone out of here. Now, that's uh, one of the ones I take, lisinopril. It's the commonest, and we're going to get to it. Uh, amlodipine, somebody already put that up on the screen, yep. is the second commonest. And the third is hydrochlorothiazide. Okay. I take all so, three of those. Yep. We're going to, and that, those are the three commonest. And we're going to get to all the blood pressure medicines that you might be on, what, whether they're good or bad, and what, what would be the indications for uh, taking various blood pressure medicines besides the best ones. And we're going to get to them in turn. Um, so um, all of you, whether you are already a kidney patient or not, you should, if you've got high blood pressure, your doctor should at some point check your urine protein critical and check your kidney function, your kidney number. Anybody with high blood pressure, it's very common for people with high blood pressure that they may have an abnormality of their kidneys. It's, a, it's one of the commonest causes of kidney failure, high blood pressure related kidney disease. So you need to see if your kidney function is okay. And, um, and we talk about this just about every time we get on the air, but I will say it again. If most of you are stage three, meaning your kidney number is between a GFR of 30 to 60, big range. And most of you will not wind up going on dialysis. You will not have to worry about transplant, a kidney transplant. But you do have to worry about hardening of the arteries. I won't use the big word. And the things that come with it, which is death from a heart attack, a stroke, angina, chest pain, heart failure. And here's a very important point. If you can reduce blood pressure, just as an example, from let's say 145, and you'd reduce it by 10 points, your top number now, to 135, you can decrease your risk of dying by 20 to 30 percent. That's massive. Of yeah. a heart attack, of a stroke, of heart failure. This stuff is important for your lifespan. So pay attention, everybody, and we're going to go through it. Let's go to the basics. Systolic, your top number. What is systolic? It's when the heart is squeezing, okay? It's squeezing, it's contracting, and it puts the pressure out there on your blood vessels. Blood vessels. That's why it's the higher number, the top number. Diastolic is when the heart relaxes. And so it's a lower pressure in the arteries. That's all it is. Now, before we get into uh, all the drugs that you might be uh, considering or that you may be on, we need to know what your real blood pressure is. And you need a home blood pressure monitor. Don't depend on one blood pressure check when you go into a doctor, because that number could be meaningless. Your numbers that you get at home are much, much, much more important. So the latest goal for blood pressure, and this has been a moving target for the heart doctors, the kidney doctors, the various specialists, the latest goal from the latest research is around 120 to 130 on the top number. But there's a big uh, if. It's if you checked your blood pressure correctly. Because a lot of people are going to get higher values that are not correct. How do you get your blood pressure checked correctly? First of all, you need to be seated. You need to have on a chair with back support. Uh, you shouldn't be chatting. 
and you shouldn't have your blood pressure checked over your jacket or your shirt it needs to be right on your skin the blood pressure cuff and for about a half an hour before you get a blood pressure check no cigarettes no caffeine and no exercise you need to be relaxed for 30 minutes and all of us most people across the 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 developed world have large arms you 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 are much better off getting a large not a small blood pressure cuff if you have a choice use the larger blood pressure cuff it'll give you a more accurate blood pressure too many people use a small cuff on a big arm they're going to get a falsely high blood pressure and you want your blood you want your arm sitting at it on a table at your heart level right here mm -hmm. right on a table and that's where you put the cuff on so those are some of the key things uh and you check it most of the offices around the world you have these machines checking your blood pressure automated machine and they're great they're cheap they're great they're reliable and you sit there you do the things we just talked about and you do three values and you take the lowest value don't worry about the first one take your lowest one that's the one that you're trying to get to your goal all right and you got to check your blood pressure at home and the two outstanding reasons that james knows about is which which two things that happen in the doctor's office you have white coat syndrome which is you get nervous and your blood pressure goes up even if you don't try it i have i have the same white coat syndrome when i see the scale <laughs> my weight goes up when i see it your blood pressure yeah right no my weight does blood. i'm like doc it's weight coat syndrome take a few pounds off <laughs> Oh, I got you. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah, yeah they never fall for it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. White well, coat yeah. syndrome, and I can't remember what the other one is. There's a reverse. It's rare. In other words, some people actually have lower blood pressure in the doctor's office. Unusual. But your number that you get at home on a regular basis, or at work if you can, to get some idea of your blood pressure at work, just for the heck of it to know. Because blood pressure is a 24-hour thing. And you want your goal to be around 120 to 130 for most of the day, okay? Um, now, before we get into all the medicines, we're going to talk about lifestyle, which we always do. We have to talk mm -hmm. about lifestyle. But I'll tell you this. Generally speaking, don't depend on lifestyle to cure your blood pressure. With a few uh, exceptions. One of the exceptions is this weight loss drug, uh, weight loss drugs now, there's a bunch of them, mm -hmm. that you may lose 20% of your, of your body weight. You may lose 40 pounds. In a situation like that, you may come back to a normal blood pressure. But that's unusual. Most people need the medicine. Lifestyle will help, but you're going to probably always need the med meds are going to win out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are the things on lifestyle affect blood pressure? We're going to run through them. Everybody probably, probably knows them. Give me a couple, James, things that may lower your blood, uh, raise your blood exercise. pressure. Exercise. Start exercising. Oh, that'll no, no, lower saying, it. Oh, what, smoking. Raise... Okay. Smoking's a bad one. You got to stop. Eating a high sodium diet. Like right. processed food just loaded with sodium. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to spend a lot of time on diet, but James is right. But and 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 if you're on a high sodium diet, and where is the sodium? The salt is in, and I like this. This is someone I heard this well. Anything in a bag, a box, or a can, right? If you there you go. In a bag, a box, or a can is probably going to be processed and way high in sodium. If you can avoid a lot of that stuff in bags, boxes, or cans, which most people can't, you're going to right away be on a much lower sodium diet. And if you can stay away from eating at restaurants and fast food places, those are the big culprits. Not your salt shaker. It's those things. Okay. Um, and James is absolutely right. What are the things that can lower the blood pressure? Exercise for sure. Exercise for sure. But again, these are just things that may help but not uh, 
get you off for medicines. The other thing is a plant-based diet, the Mediterranean diet, uh, which may have something to do with having more potassium in your diet, which a lot of kidney patients are afraid of, but don't be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Unless you're running potassiums in the five, five and a half range or more, that Mediterranean plant-based diet will help. Is, is coffee bad for your blood pressure, James? What do you think? It's got caffeine in it, so I'm going to say too much coffee is bad. Well, it turns out it's safe. Caffeine will not be adversely impacting your blood pressure in the long, in the big picture. So you can drink your coffee, okay? <laughs> but try not to drink a lot of booze because that can definitely push your blood pressure up and, and, and cause damage in, in many, many different ways. Um, okay, so we're going to go over the medicines that a lot of you folks may be on that are not first line. I promise you, we will get to the first line drugs, but, but a lot of you, and just last week, someone asked me about a drug that was definitely not first line. And I told uh, whoever was asked the question that we'll discuss it today. So let's go over some of these drugs that are not first line. Before we do it, um, it is important that you get to your goal. And if your doctor is not getting you <clears throat> to your goal or your other health practitioner, whether it's nurse practitioner or a PA, if they're not getting you to your goal, you need to get another therapy person because there are enormous numbers of drugs to get you to your goal. Most of you are not going to need a bunch of them, but I'll tell you from the outset, if you're one of these folks that starts out with the over 160 blood pressure consistently, okay, you're checking it at home, you're over 160, you're probably going to need at least two drugs and maybe three. So I'm going to talk about the best drugs, but you may need to be on more than one drug, all right? So the first drug we're going to talk about is clonidine. Have you heard of clonidine, James? You've heard of it, right? That's one of mine. Okay. Now, That's the one that I take at night because it makes me sleepy. Perfect. That's perfect. Clonidine is a strong drug. Uh, I don't know, James, full high blood pressure history but I think you've had significantly high blood pressure. Yeah. And, and not everybody has, you know, difficult blood pressure. James had difficult. If you have difficult, you may wind up having to go on clonidine, but it's not a first choice drug for many reasons. It makes you sleepy. It gives you a dry mouth. It can give you erectile dysfunction uh, and you can get a really slow heart rate, especially if you combine that with beta blockers. And it's really not a once a day drug. You don't want to be on, unless you have a specific reason, um, blood pressure drugs that you got to take more than once a day. Too hard. Try to just get to the once a day drugs and we're going to give you all of those. Um, But there is an alternative, James, you may or may not have heard of it. Uh, If you are a candidate for for a strong drug and you have trouble taking the pills, there is a patch for clonidine. And it's a great oh. alternative. You only put it on once a week. It's a great drug for people that seem to be forgetting to take their medicine. And it comes in three different strengths. And it will help your blood pressure once a week patch. Not everybody likes the patch. Some people get a little irritation. But it is a great drug for difficult to control blood pressure. Not first line. Okay? Yeah, I like the patch. But I actually like that it makes me sleepy. Because I take it at 8 o'clock, and by 9.30, it is a struggle to keep my eyes awake. So I go to bed, and boom, I am out as soon as my head hits the pillow. Yeah, well, I mean, it's I hadn't thought about it. But certainly, if you are a chronic insomniac, and you've got significant blood pressure, clonidine is not a bad, a bad choice, okay? But again, not the first choice. The next group of drugs, which are definitely not first choice for many reasons... Someone asked about it last week. They asked about hydralazine. It's a drug called a vasodilator. Open dilate means opens up the blood vessels. And hydralazine is one of them, but it's a three times a day drug. It's not something you should be on. And, and to be on a vasodilator, you need to be on two additional drugs. So you're automatically on three drugs once you're on a vasodilator. On a vasodilator, whether it's hydralazine or 
the most powerful blood pressure drug, which is called minoxidil, which controls anybody's blood pressure. I have yet to see a patient that I failed to control their blood pressure when I use this drug, but it's got side effects. And you got to use again, it, uh, the uh, drug to slow your heart rate called a beta blocker, which we'll get into and water pills. So not the first choice by any stretch. And that minoxidil, I won't get into a lot of detail, but it does cause hair growth. Men have used it for, uh, for hair growth, but women don't like it. And, and, and I've had women with severe blood pressure. Anyway, they died because they wouldn't take their minoxidil, which is really sad. Mm-hmm. But anyway, very powerful drug. The next drug, not first line, is something that James is also on. It's the aldosterone antagonist aldosterone aldosterone is a hormone that on the kidney it gets the kidney to put sodium back in the blood and pee out the potassium if you block that which is the aldosterone blockers that james is on i think you're on aldactone james i I think it's spironolactone spironolactone yes it's it's a it blocks the aldactone but what we'll do is interesting. Yeah, James has got James has got a significant blood pressure uh, issue, and Plus, he's on he's on amlodipine and hydrochlorothiazide, two of the commonest. And uh, and like I said, he's on all three of the commonest drugs. But he's yep. also on um, uh, the beta block metoprolol and the clonidine. But we're going to get to all those. Um, but the that's um, a lot of pills I take. Yeah, yeah, and and most of you and James is, is uh, we're not going to get into detail about James, but his, but but I will. I think the main thing to know uh, from what James is is got going on is that if you you if you got blood bad blood pressure, you may need to be on a lot of different meds. Mm-hmm. And and mine's and, controlled now. Yeah, and it's perfect, okay. it, which yeah. I'm very happy. And 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 again, it, don't accept your doctors. If, and you may need another doctor if they if they're not able to get it. Say, hey, doc, why don't you refer me to somebody else? Okay, to get it under control. So these these aldosterone blockers because they block that aldosterone, the potassium can go up, mm-hmm. and that can be dangerous for some patients. Uh, but we talked about this in the the discussion of how to slow your decline of kidney function. The aldo blockers are one of the types of drugs that can help slow the decline in those of you folks with a lot of protein in the urine. And it's, and the, the main names of those are plerinone, aldactone, and phenerinone or carendia. We had a patient last week that was on that phenerinone. It's an aldo blocker, not first line. Okay. The next group are the alpha blockers. Okay. And the two that are currently in use are ter- terazosin and doxazosin. And these alpha blockers are not first line because they can cause big drops in your blood pressure when you stand up. And, and that can be dangerous, especially for older folks. You can drop your blood pressure and fall down. It works, but it's not first line. It's a once a day. They may have use for those of you older men like me who have trouble passing your urine. There is a drug that will not drop your blood pressure that's also an alpha blocker that may help you men with prostate problems to pass your urine. But I sometimes use it with older men. If they can use an additional drug for their blood pressure and their prostate, I may put them on uh, one of the alpha blockers, but again, not first line. Another group of drugs, not first line are the loop diuretics. What are the names here? Furosemide, Bumex, Bumetamide. Uh, those are the loop diuretics. They're great to get rid of swelling, edema. They're great for heart failure patients, but they can do a lot of, make a lot of trouble with your electrolytes. They can get your potassium to get too low. 
and they can cause other things. Very important if you've got hypertension, I'm sorry, if you've got congestive heart failure, you're going to probably need those loop diuretics to get the fluid off. And some advanced kidney patients may need these loop diuretics when they start getting low kidney function and they start accumulating fluid, but not first line for blood pressure. The next group of drugs, very common, James is on one, are the beta blockers. The be James is on the most popular beta blocker, which a lot of you are on, which is metoprolol, also called Lopressor, also called Toprol. There's an extended release. These are not once a day unless you use the extended release, the Toprol. Otherwise, the metoprolol or low pressure is a twice a day drug. Besides being twice a day, the reason why they're not first line is that they have a lot of potential downsides. They can cause erectile dysfunction. They can raise. Wait, I got two drugs now that can cause that for what you said. But hopefully, it's not everybody. Just because something can do something doesn't mean that it will. And I'm just telling you the reasons why these drugs don't make the top of the hit parade. Okay. Yeah. There's reasons, right? And um, it, some people get fatigued on beta blockers. Their heart rate can go down a lot. Uh, and, uh, and another thing about beta blockers, and you need, need to keep this in mind, James, you don't want to stop them suddenly because you can get a rebound. Okay, blood pressure can can go sky can go skyrocket. So and it can lower your heart rate, especially if you already got a low heart rate. So they can be dangerous, but they have great uses. Um, they're great if you've got chest pain, angina. They can help that. They're great if you've got fibrillation of the heart to slow your heart down or other arrhythmias. And they're extremely important if you've ever had a heart attack. Mm. that can help prevent your, a second heart attack. So they have specific uses. And, and there's a lot of other ones besides a low pressor and a tenolol is another common one. There's a whole list of beta blockers. One of the beta blockers that some of you may be on is called carvedilol, a very popular drug that has been shown to be beneficial if you happen to have heart failure. So in that case, it's being used for a weak heart, not for blood pressure. You may have low blood pressure, but you may be on carvedilol to help with your heart failure. There's a bunch of other beta blockers. There's propranolol, abetalol, um, and uh, we're not going to get into all of them. Uh, we're getting there, James. We're getting to the top three. The first <laughs> of the top three. I'm playing bingo over here. I almost have bingo with these. <laughs> You got your you got your blood pressure card. Yeah, bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Very close, eh? So hydrochlorothiazide is the commonest diuretic, and I use mm -hmm. a ton of it. For what I take, and and chlorothaladone is just as good, if not better. Um, and in my opinion, uh, they can probably help a lot of you folks with high blood pressure to be added to one of the other drugs that we're going to come to next, the amlodipine or the, the top of the hit parade. Um, there's downsides to the diuretics. Uh, they can also cause muscle cramping, make, they can mess with gout. Uh, they can also theoretically cause erectile dysfunction. The biggest one is dehydration if you're taking too much. But, but I use very low dose. I use 12.5 milligrams, which is probably all you need. And that's unusual. I take 25 milligram. Yes, I mean, 25 you may need. But if you're taking more than that, you may well get thirsty, get dehydrated, and it could be a problem. It could also lower your potassium. But, of course, you're taking a drug that raises potassium. Yep. Right? Uh, and uh, But, again, for just like the loop diuretics, they're great if you got edema. And, and it can help with that. And here's a very big advantage of these drugs. And anytime I use an ACE or ARB, which we're going to get to, uh, I, I use one with a, a diuretic combined. 
okay, low dose thyroid combined. Because ACEs and ARGs can raise your potassium. Diuretics can help lower the potassium. So good thing to combine. All right. And um, next group of drugs gets to amlodipine, which is a which is the second and the top of the hit parade. Uh, amlodipine is a, called a calcium channel blocker. And what does calcium do? Calcium helps muscle contraction. And um, calcium can help con- with the muscle contraction of the heart, muscle contraction of blood vessels. You relax them and you can just think about how that might lower your blood pressure. That's how it works. Amlodipine, the second commonest drug used out there in doses of two and a half, five, and 10. I normally don't use less than 10. I, I don't think that, I mean, I think it's possible that a two and a half or five milligram uh, uh, dose can help your blood pressure. But if that's the drug you're on, uh, I, I generally I have you on 10 milligrams uh, with a water pill. And um, there's two types of these calcium channel blockers. Um, the group that uh, amlodipine's in is in a group of drugs that we used to use all the time, but we moved over to amlodipine. Have you heard of nifedipine? You might have been on that, or procardia. We used to use that. And philodipine is another one like amlodipine. But somehow amlodipine, I guess, had the best marketing, and and that's the most popular. But there's two other drugs in the the calcium channel blocker uh, group that, that, uh, that are beneficial, especially if you have fast heart rate or atrial fibrillation. These two drugs, which are calcium channel blockers, are cardizam or Tiazac and verapamil. Uh, again, not first-line drugs, but if you happen to have high blood pressure and atrial fibrillation, it may be a great drug to slow your heart down. Drum roll. We're at the safest and best blood pressure drug for CKD and for non-CKD patients. The drugs we have talked about ad nauseum on Dadvice TV. We probably say it every time I'm on this show. The ACEs and the ARBs. The ARBs. Hello. Yay. Hello. The ACEs and the ARBs. And James is going to tell you what the ACEs are and how to identify them and what the ARBs are and how to identify them. You know, have you learned that yet, <laughs> I cannot remember which ones are the prills and which ones are the tans, but I'm looking up my notes right now and I found it. The aces end in prill. Yes, yes. And the arbs end in tan, like losartan, which I take and so do so many other people. Yes, okay. Good work, James. So why do they make the top of the hit parade? And this is important. You got to pay close attention to this. Why are the the number one drug, the safest drug, the best drug that most of you should be on for your blood pressure as a starting drug? Because they're generic, okay, which means they're cheap. They're once a day. And I would not take any of these that are more than once a day because there's so many once a day alternatives. And not only do they reduce your blood pressure, but they can increase your lifespan, okay? They decrease your risk of death from the hardening of the arteries problems, especially people that have CKD. Again, you had a higher risk of these things. They decrease your stroke risk. They decrease your risk of developing heart failure, an enormously big problem for kidney patients. They decrease your risk of getting diabetes. They slow progression of your kidney decline. These drugs are great. And the ACEs and the ARBs are generally interchangeable. Okay. You could take an ACE or an ARB. You do not want to take both an ACE and an ARB. Why, James? You know the answer to that, I think. I cannot remember why, but you only take one. I do know that part. If you take, so, okay, we're going to get into this in a minute, but ACEs and ARBs initially 
can lower your GFR. And again, they can raise your potassium. And if you take them both, you may get a really severe lowering of GFR called AKI, okay, acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. Just use one or the other. And here's another important issue. If you are a heart failure patient, you probably want to be on an ACE because the research has shown that the ACEs will do better for heart failure patients in terms of better survival with their heart failure. Heart failure patients and ACE, otherwise just a regular hypertensive patient or CKD patient, ACEs or ARP, doesn't matter. And James has already mentioned the side effect of the ACE or ARP. Yes. <laughs> I used cough. to get that. I was on Lasartan and I had the cough and now I'm on Lisinopril. And the interesting thing is that it used to be felt, and we got a lot of data on this. These drugs have been around since the 80s. They've been around a long time. We got a lot of data, a lot of research on them. It used to be felt it was the, it was the ACE that will do it, but it could be the ARB that'll do it. So if you get it with one, you can take the other one. Simple, okay? And then there's something that's very rare where you get swelling of your lips and your face. It's called angioedema, very rare side effect. But other than that, these drugs have very few side effects, except the stuff we're going to get into now in terms of potassium and the GFR. One important exception, pregnant women. These are not good drugs for pregnant women, okay? Because they could cause the birth defects. Now, if you're a kidney patient or any blood pressure patient, you should have not get your GFR check and get your urine protein check. You can get a dipstick on the urine, but more importantly, you got to get your urine test for albumin and creatinine. That ratio, that that test of the urine that you sent to the lab, they measure the albumin and the creatinine. That will give you a good idea of how much protein is in the urine in 24-hour urine. Um, you guys go back and listen to a couple of talks on uh, slowing kidney function, proteinuria. There's a, we discussed that a few times. We talk about using the ACEs and ARBs. And if you have, I'll repeat it again because it's worth repeating, Significant proteinuria, which means uh, in the U.S. over 300 in that albumin creatinine over 300. Outside the U.S. would be over 30 because you use different units. If you consistently more than one plus on the dipstick consistently, you're in dipstick, that's significant protein. If you are in that category, you need to get to the maximum dose of either an ACE or an ARB. And I'm gonna give you those maximum doses in a few minutes. Um, these drugs uh, will be even good if you've got advanced kidney disease, stage four or five, you can still use them. You don't need to reduce the drug, you don't need to stop the drugs. But here's the sad part, James. Less than half of you folks out there with CKD and significant protein in the urine are on these drugs that are so important mm -hmm. for your lifespan and your progression of kidney. So if you're not on them, you definitely need to talk to your doctor about it. Now, a lot of you start them and stop them. And what are the two most common reasons why people stop the ACE or the ARP, James? Do you remember? Is it because of the drop in their GFR and they kind of get scared and stop it? Yeah, and doctors who are not uh, informed about this issue may take you off it and never put you back on it. And, uh, and not only the drop in the GFR, but the, there's one other thing that scares people off with these drugs. What's the other thing? Mm, I don't know the other thing. It's an electrolyte. Is it potassium? Yes, yes. Oh. Potassium, right? Potassium goes up with these ACEs or ARBs, and people stop it for that. 
that you know when my my, my the doctor I have now about a year ago put me on lisinopril and she warned me which I thought was great just hey your GFR is probably going to drop and she so she estimated where it would drop to and she did mention we're going to keep an eye on your potassium uh, and it did drop when I took it, but I, I explained to her, I said, hey, I'm prepared for this. I know it's going to drop and it's not going to keep dropping. It's just a temporary thing and it's more important to get my blood pressure awesome. I, right now, I am under 120 every time, like 110, 118, and my bottom number is right around 80 and I feel great. It's worth it. Which situations, and this you may or may not know, are very common. You're taking a certain medicine, very common. I'll just tell you. People that take NSAIDs like Motrim and Advil, uh, ibuprofen, uh, you take those together with an ACE and R, that can exacerbate that drop in GFR. So be careful. Dehydration, ACEs and ARBs, and one of those um, NSAIDs like Motrim, that can also exacerbate it. But in general, as James said, he's got a smart doctor, and I'm really glad to hear. Is it a she that she told yes, you she. that? Yes, she. Yep. Tell, tell her that your kidney specialist gives her kudos. I like that. Yeah, I will. That was that. That's excellent. That's excellent. Um, we, the experts, the kidney experts have have all agreed. You could drop thirty percent, and it's okay, because on the longer term, these drugs are going to get you to live longer and slow your decline of kidney function. And we know that this study, this has been studied. The people that stop the drugs, the ACE or ARB, you're more likely to wind up on dialysis or dying if you stop it after five years. And I just read something just came out this month. They had people with acute renal failure that went off their ACE or ARB. The ones that went back on them live longer Hey. These drugs, these drugs are just winding up uh, being good news for you folks, and uh, and you need to if you if you got uh, the drug at one point it was stopped, revisit it, talk to your doctor about it, and if you are consistently uh, again above one plus on a urine dipstick. 300, greater than 300 on the albium creatinine, greater than 30 outside the U.S., you need to be on the maximum dose of, mm-hmm. of one of these, of an ACE or an R. Even if you got normal blood pressure, uh, but you got protein in the urine, you're, you're a candidate for a low dose, low dose of the ACE or an R. Okay. And I'm going to finish up, so we got time for questions. Um with um, the maximum doses and the names of these drugs that all of you should be on an ACE or an R as one of your blood pressure medicines. This is the number one drug that we recommend. Um, so we've got lisinopril, also called Zestril. The maximum dose is about 80 milligrams. Whoa, and, that's a lot. Yeah, that's the maximum dose. What do you want, James? Five. <laughs> That's homeopathic. I hate to tell you, but you, but okay. Um, With anyway, everything else, I got a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why you're only on five milligrams. That's that's uh, that is that's a that's a dose that I would use for heart failure. It's 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 not uh, a dose uh, that I would use. Uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for your cardiovascular health. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and again, so, so what, you know, anyway, I'm not going to get into your things, but that, that should probably be at a higher dose and maybe, uh, the metoprolol or one of the others could be at a lower dose, but that's not up to me. That's up to your doctor. So the maximum dose of lisinopril is 80 for benazepril. It's 40. Captopril, I wouldn't even buy. If you're on Captopril, get off it. Tell your doctor that you've heard from me. There's no reason for it. It's a three times a day drug. It's the first ACE. It was a great drug when we had no other drugs. Yeah. It was the first one. It was great. And we showed it had great effects for diabetics to slow the 
diabetes down and slow the kidney process down. But now we have one today, so I wouldn't even bother with that. And Allopril is a great one, or Vasotec. That's 40, the maximum dose. And Ficinopril is 80. So basically, 40 or 80, somewhere in that neighborhood for the pearl drugs, 40 to 80 for the pearl drugs, all right? And that's it's if you want to get the most benefit out of these drugs for cardiovascular health, decrease your risk of dying from the various heart things we talked about, and slowing your decline of kidney function, you want to be on the maximum dose. And that should be your, your where you start from. The best drug is where you start from. Then you add on to that the water pills and the other drugs we discussed, the amlodipine. Okay, I would basically, for all of these ACEs or ARBs, a little HCTZ would be my second drug, a little bit of the water pill. And then I may go to amlodipine, and then I may go to, you know, and then there's a lot of choice, metoprolol, et cetera, if you need additional help. On the ARBs, okay, top one that I think, and I, I've used a lot of it, is losartan. Mm -hmm. Losartan. And that dose is 100 milligrams. Um, and um, there's... Another one, Irbisartan, uh, is 300 milligrams. Uh, Olmosartan is 40 milligrams. Telmosartan is 80. There's a Valsartan. I wouldn't take it because it's twice a day. If you're on a twice a day blood pressure drug, ask your doctor if he can get you on a once a day ACE or an R. And I'm going to end this before we answer a few questions by talking just briefly about the miracle drugs that we've, we've had several talks on this, and we'll get to it again, I'm sure, in the future. The SGLT2s, okay? I was wondering the, if you were going to mention those. You can't, you can't have, you, you cannot have a kidney conversation these days without talking about the SGLT2s. The, they, they end in floxin, the floxin. Um, and these drugs will have some effect on blood pressure. They, they, they're originally uh, intended for diabetics. They help control your blood sugar, okay? Uh, but they will have some effect on decreasing your blood pressure. But, but they have other really wonderful effects to decrease your heart failure deaths, the slow progression of kidney failure. Um, and they are great drugs for those of you, again, go back to the protein proteinuria uh, discussion. If those of you that got a good bit of protein in the urine, you're on the ACE or an R, the SGLT2 should be added to it as another one of your medications. So we got a little time for questions, James, and I'll let you pick a few out. All right. We got a lot of good questions. Chandra says, what about those on dialysis? Can these drugs help with their you know, uh, life expectancy as well as blood pressure also? You can continue them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Continue then, them. Okay. And then Kelly, who's a regular here, asks, how often should you check your blood pressure to understand your overall control? Okay. So I think you can, you can get obsessed with anything. And a lot of people have anxiety and they get obsessed with stuff. And, uh, and, you know, whether you, it's weight or blood pressure, you don't need to obsess over it. You could check it periodically. If you're on a new medicine, a little more frequently. The most important thing, and I'll repeat it again, if you're getting weak or dizzy, especially when you're standing up, that's the time to check it. Make sure you check it. You don't want to overdose yourself because you may have too low a blood pressure and if it gets too low, it can cause kidney failure. It can cause a heart attack. It can cause a stroke. So you don't want to let it get too low. That's the main time that I would check it. Otherwise, maybe once or twice a week, once you're stable, you can even do it less than that. But, you know, and you want to do it in between your doctor visits so you can give your doctor some idea of, of how your blood pressure is doing. Because just getting an office blood pressure every three months doesn't tell you much about what's going on. Yeah, I used to, one of the blood pressure medications I took, 
I would get dizzy occasionally standing up or, and I think this is related to it, if I peed too much too fast, I would get very lightheaded. And they told me it was my blood pressure probably dropping and switched me on. This is before my kidney issues when I was just right. trying to manage my blood pressure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, I'm trying to look through some more of these. Do you see any on your end that okay. you'd like to answer? All right, let me see here. Okay, uh, now uh, the first one I've got up here is amlodipine, a, drop, a drug that, drop, that helps protein in the urine. No, that's why it's not number one. It's not number one for people with or without uh, kidney failure. Uh, uh, amlodipine is great if you have chest pain. It's, it, these, these calcium channel blockers were initially designed for angina chest pain. They do work for blood pressure, but they don't have any other saving grace. They will, they can cause swelling and, you know, edema. Um, and they, and they're generally safe, but they're certainly not as good as ACEs or, or ARBs. Yeah. We have someone who, who says that when they take amlodipine, it makes their feet swell. Right. Okay. The next one I got up here is an IgA patient with a blood pressure of 140 over 95, over two grams of protein, telmasartan. Uh, and jar the ants and stop them lower. Yeah, again, that's fine. I think your doctor is, is, is right on. I think the jar the ants is an SGLT2. I'm not familiar with all the brand names, but I'm pretty sure it's an SGLT2. It is. Perfect. Impoglyph flows in. Yeah, cats, your, your, your doctor's right on. And, and, and I'm not going to get into IgA, but there's a lot of discussion now about how to treat IgA. We don't have time tonight for that. Uh, Nifedipine is like amlodipine. They're interchangeable. Um, you can use them once a day. Um, there, there was um, some discussion about nifedipine dropping the blood pressure too fast, but I think it's fine. You could be on nifedipine or amlodipine. Similar drugs, they do the same thing. Um, and, and Katz is also talking about variation of blood pressure. Your blood pressure, your heart rate, your body temperature will vary mm -hmm. minute to minute. So that's not unusual. Um, and te uh, yeah, so Nora has tel telmasartan. That's great. Protein in the urine, the right drug. And Sharon is asking about verapamil. As we said, verapamil is a calcium channel blocker like amlodipine, not a first line drug. It's a great drug if you got a fast heart rate with atrial fibrillation. Otherwise, no advantage. But again, any of you who are not on an ACE or an ARB, that should be your number one starting blood pressure medicine to discuss with your doctor. Um, Twenty-five. Yeah, her blood moments. pressure looks good. It's one twelve over sixty-nine with that verapamil. I'm sorry. Yeah. Her blood pressure, yeah, is down to one twelve over sixty-nine. Yeah, well, I mean, that may or may not be great. I mean, uh, I don't know what the baseline is, and I don't know if it drops to 90. Uh, but again, you need to have as, as much blood pressure data as you can bring to your doctor's visits. As you, as you are reasonable to take, that will be useful. Now, someone's asking about a 25-year-old with CKD, any hope? Well, look, Carol, if you're 25, Depending upon what stage you are um, and whether you have protein in the urine, of course there's hope. You want to catch your blood pressure under control. You want to try to have a relatively low protein diet, not a real low protein diet. You want to be on these blood pressure medicines we've talked about. There's lots of hope. And there's lots of things that are in the pipeline for 23. I just read today that we're getting very, very close God forbid, uh, Carol, you will need this. But in the future, you're gonna, we're going to have a lot more kidneys available from, uh, from, from uh, 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 pig. They plant, they have transplanted pig kidneys into humans, and they are coming. So we're going to have a lot more kidneys available. Um, again, uh, Romans on Valsartan, it's, it's a, it's a twice a day drug. So I'm not, I would not use that. Um, and Romans on crazy bunch of drugs, um, bicycles almost every day, that'll lower your blood pressure. Uh, CKD3A, 
Uh, that's really not a serious concern. Um, uh, it climbs to 150. I mean, basically, uh, I, this is kind of a crazy regimen. I don't have time to get into it. Uh, and um, uh, again, as far as the number one drug would be an Acerob, I would use a, a Valsartan as a twice a day drug. So I'm not sure why you're on that one. Uh, I, would use, I would use one of the other uh, ACEs or ARBs. Um, Okay, uh, my blood pressure, okay, I have to take a rub, okay. All right, is there always a cause, always a cause for high blood pressure? I'm not sure what Carol's question is. There's always a cause for well, high so blood pressure. So our son has high blood pressure, okay. they can't figure out what causes it. Okay, most high blood pressure diagnosis is essential. What does essential mean? It's a kind of a stupid name. It means we have no idea <laughs> what's <laughs> causing it. So most blood pressure is not secondary, it means we know he has a cause. Kidney disease is a cause of secondary high blood pressure. There's a bunch of other secondary causes, but most are not uh, explained by a definitive cause. One of the most common things, especially for young people, is stress. And you get rid of the stress, and you'll see the blood pressure come down a lot. And a lot of, I remember when I was a kid, I remember going to my doctor's office, my blood pressure was sky high because I had white coat hypertension. <laughs> so anyway, stress and get the blood pressure checked when, when your child's at home. Here's uh, a question that Chaz asked, so I think is a good one. He's right. prescribed two different pills. Um, I, I got it right up here on the screen. Uh, should is it okay to take him at the same time, or should he spread his medication out? Do you have any uh, opinion Again, on that? Again, you, 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 this is a oh, nifedipine and benazepam. Okay, mm -hmm. no, you take them. You take to me once a day drugs. Take them all at the same time. I take mine at night. Whatever, whatever works for you, but make sure you take them. The main thing is, if you don't take them, you're going to be in trouble. And, and if you got drugs that you don't like because of the side effects, get on something else. And again, the ones we mentioned, Acerob's probably going to be your best bet. <coughs> you got maybe time for one or two more. Um, yeah. I just saw a good one. Oh, someone at Curtis asked, how long can <coughs> your kidney function stay stable? Can you talk about the rate of decline? Okay. Right. So, um, the rate of decline, the primary determinant of the rate of decline is the protein in the urine. Very simple. If you buy my book, there is a chapter that predicts how fast your kidney function will decline. We'll predict whether or not realistically dialysis or transplants in your future. There are ways to plug in some numbers. These, this stuff is available online to make those kinds of predictions. But generally speaking, if you got a 3A CKD, 30 to 60 in that range, especially if you're an older person and you don't have a lot of protein, you're probably not going to have a rapid decline. Normal decline for all of us is we lose about one to two points on our GFR a year after 40. And that's why the normal GFR, if you're like my age, I'm 76, maybe normal, maybe 45 to 60, because because a lot of people lose GFR. And again, if you don't have protein, you're probably fine. Someone's taking chlorothaladone and farts. This is a far, far, I can't pronounce it, F-A-R-X-I-G-A. <laughs> I, I don't know why drug <laughs> companies make these names you can't pronounce. But anyway, that's fine. I mean, uh, that's a GLT and a, and a diuretic. That's fine. They both will lower uh, uh lower the uh, blood pressure. Um, One more question. Beta, uh, beta blockers. Good point. Somebody, Tim, said beta blockers can elevate potassium. That's a good point. Yes. One of the things that I look at on my patient that comes in with high potassium is are they taking potassium? A lot of times people are prescribed potassium and, and they don't even tell the doctor because they don't think of it as, as, a, as a medicine. <laughs> And if you're getting potassium and you're on a drug like an ACE or an OB that could raise potassium, or for that matter, a beta blocker, 
you, you know, you got to be aware of the things that could be raising it. Um, all right, we're out of time, Doc. It is all right. Okay, top okay. of the hour. You got a lot of questions in today, though. You were like flying through them. That was great. I try my best, James. <laughs> try my best. All okay. right. Well, I want to thank everyone out there. Please, if you like the video, you find it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Let us know. Um, are there other topics you'd like to hear about in the future? Um, you know, what would you like to hear from us? Um, we go through, we read the comments and get ideas for future shows. And, um, you know, appreciate your, your comments and all that. And this is the last scheduled show for this month. I'm trying to work in another one. I have someone who wrote a book about dialysis. We're working on a date to get him back in this month. But Dr. Rowe is here every single month talking about great stuff to help you, you know, slow down the progression of your kidney disease, increase your life expectancy, and better understand CKD. All right, Doc. Thank you so much. We got to look at all of my, you know, my big potpourri of pills. And I learned that half of them cause ED. I don't suffer from that, but I worry about that. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I gotta talk to my doctor about that lisinopril too, and maybe I can lower down that metropol or whatever it is. That's the most expensive prescription that I have out of all those. And every time I refill, which I just did this weekend, I'm always like, oh, I, I got to find something cheaper for that one because it's a bit on the costly side. But thank you so much for being here, Doc. This has been great. And enjoy the rest of the month. And I will see all of you guys out there in the next video. Bye, everyone. <laughs>